I was asked by somebody to uh, show the pond, so I thought I'd have a little show of the pond. I was specifically asked by somebody if they could see the pond. And being as I'm quite proud of it, I thought, well, I'll just put it on the next video and then they can see it. This is the water that you can hear every time I'm doing a video outside. And this is my garden. And since the illness, I have to say that um, I spend an awful lot of time in the garden. It's my pride and joy, really. So we sit here. Me and Fran generally sit here in the mornings and afternoons. And, and uh, we've got a table between us and we pull the chairs forward and we just sit here and, uh, and have a good old look at our pond. And just to sort of show you where the water comes in from, we made a little stream as well. Because me, like a lemon one day, when we was doing redoing the pond a few weeks ago, I thought, I saw this bridge. I know, mental, wasn't it? I saw this bridge for sale on eBay and it was local. And I just thought, I'd love to have that in the garden. So I bought it. It was only 50 or 60 quid or something. It wasn't that expensive. And then we just, uh, we dug underneath there. And then, and the water comes in there. Comes in there underneath the big rock and goes underneath the bridge and travels all the way down into the pond. We've got 22 fish in the pond, but you can't see any. But we made little houses for them, so they all dart underneath there. Anyway, that's not me being flash in any way whatsoever. That's just, you know, I mean, it looks beautiful. We've ripped this pond out four times and we've done it. And it does look absolutely beautiful. And I am so proud of it. I'm so grateful to Mark who built it all for me. I had to rip apart all my stuff. He laid the patio for me, all that one there. And then I laid this patio which was a bit of a crap job, but I laid it. And then it was too light, it was too high, so it had to get ripped up and laid again. Anyway, I digress. There's my pond, my beautiful, beautiful pond. So this one is one of my favorites. And I'll tell you why it's my favorite. It's because it's the penny. It's the lovely, good old English penny. And I started this entire business from one single penny. A 2008 Port Cullis penny and I sold it for two quid and that was six years ago and and I invested that bought some more pennies and did some two peas and one thing and another and reinvested it and reinvested it until we got to now and we've built a really good business up over six years from that one single penny and I had no job no money no prospects no nothing so I was as I was as on the floor as you could get and from there we've come to this so um, that penny, you know, that's why that's why this one is my favourite because everything came from a single penny. Now I quite often say in you hear me saying videos that there are certain ones I never let go, no matter how many I never let go. And I wonder like if you know sometimes I'm sure people might think, yeah, you're talking, you know, I'm sure you do, as if you've got the space. Well, I'm gonna show you something now that may or may not blow your mind, but I'm gonna show you six years worth of collecting pennies, just pennies. So come with me and have a look at this. I'm sure you've seen one of these before. I've got one of these in the bottom of my garden. Yeah, I know you're going to say to me I'm mental keeping all this money in an outside box, but let's face it, um, who's going to run away with it? It's a bit too heavy. No one's ever going to run away with anything that's in there. Right, so there we are. So look at that. That is six years worth of collecting pennies. Now, as you can see, there are some telltale signs. And this is what will show you and prove to you, prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you like, that the information that I'm giving you is not a wind up, it's absolutely true. You can see there's the odd gaps. You can see that some of the tubs are higher than the others. All of these are in date order. So if we go in a little bit, we see 1971, and you can see how many 1971s there are because they made hundreds of millions of them because that was the first one that came out so they made loads and loads and loads and flooded the market with them so then we've, let's move on to 1972 look in six years and and i've gone through thousands of thousands of thousands of thousands of pennies 
In six years, I've only managed to collect two boxes of 1973. Three boxes of 1974. Two boxes of 1975. Well, I say collected. It's not that because I sell them by the hundred as well. So I've also sold thousands and thousands. But this is the stocks. This is my, this is my overflow, my stocks. And as you can see, there were certain years... 1979, they made they made more of them than they did others. Easier to find 1979 than it is to find 1978 or 1977. You know, there's more of them. These are the results of my buying and selling activities over the last six years. 1979 there as well. You know, so and then we come over here. So now we're on to the 80s. 1981. I maintain is still one that's worth a couple of quid. I sell it for a couple of quid, even though I've managed to say three boxes of it, but it is still a difficult one. Uh, 1982, blank. Now you can see, no boxes, 1982. In six years, I've got no overflow for 1982. So as fast as I can get hold of them. 1983. And when I give you my advice on 1982, it's not to sell it now, it's to show you how much they're worth now, to prove how much they're worth now, and then get you to put them away so that in 10 years you've got something worth a tenner. You know, a thousand times its money. 1983, one box. 1984, just three boxes. 1985, uh, just one and a half boxes, not even a half a box. One box of 1985, really difficult to find. And then you have others, 86, reasonably easy to find, 87, you've got all those, so that they're easy to find from there. And then you come down to the 80s and the 90s, and you can see piled up, piled up, all the way along, 90s, piled up, all the way along, piled up, piled up, piled up. Nothing really, nothing really that valuable out of all of those, because if they were valuable, they'd be missing spaces or just a couple of boxes, you know, but these are just piled and piled and piled. And then on top of that, I've thrown a load away as well, because there's only so many you want. You know, 2016 obviously isn't a hard year. I've got X amount, 10 boxes of them, or six boxes of them, whatever it is, that'll do for now, throw the others back. And those, I've, I'll keep only keep so many and I'll throw them back. But still, I haven't managed to get more. And I go through bags and bags and bags of these. Bags and bags and bags of these I go through in order to find the little gems. So I hope this helps show you it's not just what I'm telling you I think you could be doing with your time and limited money, but I'm proving it to you. 100%, no matter what anybody says, you can see it with your own eyes. That's what I'm trying to do. So that was a bit on the mental side, wasn't it? Don't worry. Other bigger denominations I have under more secure storage, but for one P's and two P's, I've got a couple of boxes in the garden. And I just store it all in there, it's free storage. No one's gonna nick it. You know, how many box, <coughs> how many boxes of these can you run off with? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so you see how I store them? Just ordinary takeaway boxes is what I use, what you get from the takeaway shop. And, uh, and I'll put the, Put a note on it, 1987, in this one, for example. And um, nice and easy to store then. Now, supposing, supposing, for example, um, supposing you manage to save loads of 1982s. Let's talk about that one. Right, 1982 penny. At the moment, it's worth three quid. Whoops. Whoops, my guide fell away. My guide blew away. I have actually done a guide. For the penny actually um you can buy it for a pound i've done a guide for the penny www.thegreatbritishcoinhunt.com and uh, and if you look up at the top left you'll see a category that says guides go on there and you've got the penny guide and you've got other guides as well which i knew, i do know they need to be updated but unfortunately the mint has been really slow giving the information out and not giving correct information out so and the page that we used to go by has disappeared so we're waiting on getting the new figures for all the different denominations. But anyway, we have got one for the penny. So 1982 penny is worth three quid now. And in 10 years, I think it will be probably close to a tenner. In 10 years. Because so many of them are being taken out of circulation. It's a low mintage. And a lot of them are being used 
out of circulation by manufacturers for crafts and one thing and another. So, because of that, there's fewer and fewer and fewer 1982s to be found. But, as I, you know, as I say about collecting the right amount of change, just saving the right amount of change, you don't have to do what I do. You know, I save these 1987s, not because they're really worth any money. They're only worth any money to me. Oh, that's just 2014. Wrong sticker. So, 1987. So, but the reason I keep them is because I have contacts all over the world that are in the manufacturing and so on. And even though it's not a particularly rare year, that I will st still sell these by 200, 300 at a time to people that uh, want to buy them. Obviously at a low price, but I sell them to those people to make earrings and cufflinks and all sorts of things with. But if you're saving to put your kids through university or you're saving for your pension or you're saving for uh, any of the things you might want to save for the, the long term, paying your mortgage off long term, don't waste your time with stuff like this because you're not interested in setting up a business and looking worldwide for manufacturers. So cut out all the crap. Don't save the crap. You know, don't just be lazy and come home and take the change out of your pocket and throw it all in your jar, thinking you're doing yourself or your family a good turn because that's the holiday money or whatever. You're not doing them a good turn doing it that way. You need to look at my videos, get the guides, you need to write down all the key dates of all the key coins and then look through your change and when you see a coin that matches that date put it in the jar don't put anything else in there just put in the jar the stuff that's going to be worth money that's all you want to mess about with otherwise later on it and i'm going to be a pain sorting it all out you might as well sort it out now you know sort it out now make some you won't need as many tubs as me i mean there's over 45 different pennies so I have to have over 45 different tubs for each year. I have to have, uh, I have to have over 45 different tubs for one box of each year. And if I've got, as you can, as you see, I've got like many boxes of many years. It takes hundreds of tubs and all that, and more and more space and all that. You don't need to bother with that because all you're looking for is you're looking for the top money, the most money you can get over 10 years. What's really worth putting away. Because if you find a penny, there's two pennies. Let's say this one was 1982, this one is 1987. There's two pennies. One penny, not worth a lot. So you might as well put it back in your pocket and spend it towards the coffee. This penny, this penny's worth three quid. That's 300 times its face value. Just get your head around that for a second. 300 times its face value so for every one of these you put in your jar you're putting away three quid but no you're not because we're basing it on 10 years time remember we're basing it for your pension i'm not i'm not teaching you how to set up in competition with me now i'm teaching you how to look after yourself in 10 20 years for your pension so and it does it matter if my prediction on the price that it's going to be is out by a year either way does it, it doesn't matter the point is that 1982 penny in 10 years will be fetching a tenner at the very least seven quid you know and it certainly will not go below a fiver so you could go at the lowest it will be worth a fiver in 10 years and at the most maybe about a tenner now if it's a tenner it's a thousand times its value if it's a fiver, it's 500 times its face value. So it's like finding one penny, you put that one penny away, and another five, 499 pennies or 999 pennies have automatically jumped in the jar for every one of these you put in the jar. So if these are going to be worth, I think they'll be worth a tenner in 10 years' time, and I'm sticking to that. So if these are going to be worth a tenner in 10 years' time, and they cost you a penny now, that's a thousand times its value. So what if you could find a hundred of these? Just a hundred. Don't set yourself a massive target, just a hundred of these. Over the next 10 years, you found a hundred. Now, if you're looking, I almost defy you not to find a hundred over 10 years. If you find a hundred of these over 10 years and they're worth 10 pound each, a hundred times 10 pound is a thousand pound. That's a thousand pound. And all you've put away is a pound. That's all you've put away is a pound in the jar, out of your pocket, out of your shopping money. 
and you've saved a thousand pounds. Now, if you think I'm balmy, that's fine. But I've been doing this for six years and I give you the prices that I sell them for. I have no reason, you know. I mean, if anything, what's, what do I have to gain out of this? The sale of a few guides, that's all. But even then, the guides are only giving you the figures that the Royal Mint give you. So I'm not giving you anything special on the guide, a bit of information, but nothing special. I'm not telling you anything the Royal Mint isn't telling you. I'm just putting it in a what I think is an easier to understand format. That's all. Um, so, can you see that with the 1982? That's just that one coin. And just so you, just so you know, this tub, an average takeaway tub, holds approximately 700 pennies in this one tub. So if you saved one tub full at 700 pennies, if you manage to get hold of 700 pennies, and what if, what if every now and again, because we all go to the post office in the bank every now and again, so what if every time you went in, you just said, can I just have a couple of quid's worth of pennies, please? Can I have a fiver's worth of pennies, please? And that's it. And you just took them home now and again and just searched through them and just took out the dates that I'm going to tell you. What if you saved up a box full of 1982 pennies? How much would that be worth? So each one's worth a tenner. You've saved up in 10 years' time and you've saved up 700, one box full. So 700 times 10 pound would be seven grand. And all it would have cost you is seven pounds. And even if I'm wrong by double, and they're only fetching a fiver in 10 years' time, which I doubt, that would still be £3,500 for one tubful of one coin. So when you start to sort of realise the kind of money that you're letting slip through your hands, you can actually start to think, and you can go, wait a minute, one minute, hubby, one minute, wifey, with this information, we work, and we do a little bit of this on the side, hour here, hour there, not too much. With this information, we could, we, could, we could save enough money to put our kids through university or make sure they've got a car on their 18th birthday or pay the mortgage off or whatever. That's just one coin, three and a half grand, if my prediction is wrong. If my prediction is right, seven grand for one box. Yeah, mental, isn't it? Right then, so now we come on to, we might as well start, 1972. 71's not worth saving. Well, here we go. Little. I say the 71 is not worth saving. Out of the dates that I'm going to read out that I say are worth saving, if I don't read a date out, and the date that I don't read out is in the 1970s or the 1980s, so, for example, a date that I'm not going to read out is 1971, even though I've just read it out and said it, but 1971 is a crap year. Not worth saving from that point of view. However, it is worth saving if you put it in a separate jar. Because a 1971 penny is worth between two to three pence in its scrap copper value. Now, you're not allowed, it's illegal to melt them down. But the fact that it's got the copper value that is more valuable than the face value of the coin means that in the future, someone at some point will give you more than face value for that coin because they'll want the copper content, whether that be something the government does or the mint does or whatever, you know. But like, if you look at um, pre-1947 sixpences, the further you go back, the more silver content there is. After 1947, there's no silver content. That's why they used to be called silver sixpence, because they were made of silver. And the further back you go in years, the more content of silver, sorry, I'm burping, in, 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 in the coin. So there are people out there that will go out and they will buy, by the hundreds, silver sixpences, all they can get under a certain price because if they get it under a certain price it's worth them buying them and melting them down just to get the silver out of them i don't really agree with that but it does make the coin more valuable so if the coin is more valuable if a penny is worth if a certain penny is worth three pence because of its scrap value what's that going to be worth in 10 years time what is that penny going to be worth in 20 years time just for its scrap value let alone its collectible value so they, they are worth saving, but I would save them in a separate jar because I'd call that the, you know, the rubbish, um, 
the rubbish, the collectible rubbish is what I'd call it. It's, it's worth collecting be just because of the value of the copper in the coin, but it's not worth collecting and selling as a collectible coin because they made too many of them. But they are worth collecting just for the, just for the, just for the copper content of the coin and the value of the coin, if you see what I mean. Just noticed I've rambled on for 20 minutes already. I do apologise at the length for some of these videos. Um, okay, so let's go through it quickly then. 1972, if you come across any of those, and you will. Don't let anybody tell you, you will never find a 72 in your change. We have found quite a few. And it's only because either it's where coins have been stolen in sets and they've ended up back in the change, it's where someone's got a divorce and, and it's been an unpleasant one and someone's wrecked somebody's sets and put them in the change, it's where somebody's got skin, wanted a packet of fags, ripped open a set, put it in the change, or it could even be odd coins that didn't make the mark that the Royal Mint have probably left in there, which I believe that they do. I don't believe that they don't do that. I believe that they do. So you will always find odd proof coins in the change. And if you find a 1972, it's worth 15 quid. Uncirculated, it's worth 20 quid, but in good condition, it's worth 15 quid. Even if you find one in absolutely crap condition, it's worth a fiver. That's 500 times its value in rubbish condition, dirty condition. A good condition one, 15 quid, that's 1,500 times the value. 1,500, that's unbelievable. The true. And I can't sell enough of them. I can't get enough of them. I can sell enough of them, I mean, but I can't get enough of them. As many as I get, I run out. So then we've got the 2017 penny. I say that's worth collecting. I say that in 10 years' time, that coin... Even though you're finding loads of them in your change, in 10 years' time, I reckon that coin's going to be worth four or five quid. I really think the 2017 penny is worth putting in your change. And at the moment, you can probably buy bags of them, you know, but save as many as you can find. 2017 penny, I kid you not, in 10 years, you're looking at four or five quid. The 1982, we've already covered. Now, the 2017 is 90 million are then made and you're going to think I'm nuts telling you that's going to be worth four or five quid in 10 years time 1982 100 million um, the 2015 shield reverse fourth, fourth portrait so that's the first one because I made two in 2015 one with the date at the top of the head and one with the date down the side and the one with the date at the top of the head is the fifth portrait, and the one with the date down the side is a fourth portrait. Now, the fourth portrait is worth saving. 154 million. The 1984 penny is also worth saving, 154 million. And the 2008 Port Colours Reverse, the penny that started my business off, and the penny that everything came from this one penny, which I sold for two pounds six years ago. And I've sold it for two pounds since then. 180 million, a couple of quid. 1985 penny, really good one. You saw by the video, uh, 1985. You know, I have less of those than the 1984. 1985, good one. Pull that one out, put that in a jar. 1991, uh, the 1985, 200 million. 1991, 206 million. And the 1975, 221 million. And then, last of all, the 1983, 243 million and that's where I stop now you might think 240 million and you're saying it's worth collecting 180 million and you're saying it's worth collecting yes I do say it's worth collecting I do I do I do 1971 they made 1 billion 521 million 666,250 one and a half billion in 2000 they made a billion in 2001, they made 928 million. That's just under a billion. In 1999, they put 891 million in. So if I just add this up quickly, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There's more than 20 billion pennies in circulation. 20 billion more than that much more than that maybe even 25 billion now when you look at those kinds of numbers a coin that's only had 
80, 90, even 200 million. 200 million out of 20, 25 billion is, is a hard, some of these are hard to find. So even though they made 100 million 1982 pennies, 100 million, I'm still selling that at three pound each and I cannot get enough. So that coin will be 10 pound in 10 years time and with 100 million out there or that they made, you'll be able to find them. So these coins that I've just mentioned, you can find them. They're the ones you want. Check all your pennies. They're the ones you want. Any other pennies, cast them aside unless the 1970s, 1980s, put that in a separate tub as rubbish scrap. You know, put a label on it, scrap value, because I'll give you the scrap ones to collect in the two pence coins as well. So um, you collect them in a separate tub. 70s, 80s that don't make the list, right? Any 70s, any 80s that don't make the list, you put in a separate tub. And you will constantly find those that you're putting in that tub. And that's three times your money straight away. Three times your money straight away. There'll be a way of realising that. Don't worry about that over the next 10 years. What you need to worry about at the moment is you need to worry about collecting it. So, uh, that's what you want to be doing. That's what I suggest for you to do. Two tubs and then, or, and then the rest, don't save it. Please don't save it. Put it in, the, give it to the kids as a pocket money. Put it in your tip jar. Put it in your coffee jar, whatever. Go and use it on something else, get some more change. I love it when I walk in somewhere and I get a penny in my change and I look at that and I find it's one of those coins or it's even better in 1982. You go in a shop, spend a couple of quid, get your change, in there there's a 1982 penny, it actually works out. I've made more money than going into the shop in the first place because now I'm, the money I'm going to get back for selling that penny plus the money I've got, I end up with six quid back and only spent two quid and I've got that for nothing. Crazy, eh? Right, I hope this has been a benefit to you. If you've enjoyed, if you enjoy any of my videos, I just sort of ask you to do a couple of things. One, why not subscribe? Two, um, share it. Tell someone about it. If you enjoy it and you think and you've and it's been of any benefit to you whatsoever, please share it. Please uh, give it a share or a comment or a, a tell a friend about it. You know, it's the best thing you could do, really, because I'm not charging you, I'm not asking you for any money, and if you go and find a couple of coins and you think, oh, touch, look, I found a couple of these because of what Ian said, then perhaps you wouldn't mind sharing a vid. All right, many thanks. I'm Ian, and this is the thegreatbritishcoinhunt.com, and this was The Penny. Thank you very much. Bye for now.